Welcome to the Quixer Stories Volume 1. Today we're reviewing Todd Kolop, dubbed the Amazon Review Killer, a convicted killer that has ties to Florida, Georgia, Arizona, and South Carolina. Todd Kolop was one of the estimated 25 plus serial killers operating in the United States on any given year. Unlike some, he was caught with a living witness. Todd's past exhibits all the hallmarks of a serial killer, from a broken and troubled home, at the age of two his parents divorced, his father left moving to Arizona, questionable relationship with his new stepfather, then by the age of nine he had a juvenile probation officer. The officer wrote in a report, Todd Christopher Kolop was referred to the Behavior Evaluation Center at the Georgia Mental Health Institute for months in 1980. His first time being incarcerated for behavioral reasons that included animal cruelty. Again, hallmarks of a killer at a young age. Later, his mother needed to focus on herself and her troubled son moved to Tempe, Arizona to live with his father. Todd was left alone a lot. He used this freedom to hone his desires and then acted on them. On the 25th of November, 1986, in Tempe, near Broadway Road and McClintock Drive. A 15-year-old boy attacked his first victim at gunpoint. He used a 32 caliber handgun taken from the glove box of a truck. According to court records, he made four prior attempts to coerce a female friend out of her house. Then on the 5th, he forewent the coercing tactic and placed a pistol to the 14-year-old girl's head at the back of her house. She resisted at first, then he cocked the gun and she followed. He instructed her to walk with him to his house in the cul-de-sac of Gary Road in Tempe. Now inside, where he felt more in control, he restrained her. Duct tape went over her mouth and he bound her hands with rope, removing her clothes. The future of these two people and their families would be changed forever. He removed his clothes and began to sexually assault her. According to the police and court records, he told her that if she called police, he would kill her and her two younger siblings. They were ages six and three at the time. Then he walked her back to her home, but the police were called. The girl was now dealing with adult matters, having to explain to complete strangers what took place to her, undergoing medical exams. The police methodically documented everything to ensure they can act within the legal bounds and get this 15-year-old into prison. The next was to investigate the location and the predator. The officers arrived to a future serial killer's home to begin to interview Kolop. Court documents again show that he answered the door with a 22 caliber rifle pointed at the ceiling according to the police documents. When confronted about the accusation against him, He's reported saying, how much time am I going to get for this? Kolop confessed to the rape and kidnapping. After some back and forth with his attorney, he accepted a plea deal where he would plead guilty to the kidnapping under the condition that the sexual assault charge would be dropped. He did, and 13 days later he was admitted to prison. Some may be frustrated that he received a plea deal. But in the court documents, the father outlined a compelling reason to push forward and get this evil person behind bars. It was written that the father feels the defendant got quite a deal. He would have loved to see that the defendant receive a longer sentence. However, if it meant that their family and daughter has to go through a trial and additional court hearings, he wasn't interested. Their family's primary concern is the welfare of their daughter and they feel the closure of this matter would be the best thing for her. The father does feel that the defendant should have been convicted as a sex offender. They are most concerned about the welfare of their daughter, and they would like her to grow up unafraid. On the 29th, Todd Christopher Kolop was assigned an Arizona Department of Corrections number. He was officially an inmate. He walked in and began his 14-year confinement. He was not a model prisoner charged with fighting and destroying property, among other infractions. Then realization of being released, he began taking advantage of his time and the services offered to him. He earned his high school equivalency, then attended and graduated from Central Arizona College with a bachelor's degree in computer science. 
on paper, he appeared to be changing his ways. On November 24, 2001, Todd Kolop re-entered society after spending nearly half of his life behind bars. He was a college graduate and not on any registered sex offender list, so he moved from Arizona to South Carolina and began a new life. Kolop was hired as a graphic designer in Spartanburg, working for nearly two years and began attending Greenville Technical College. He saved up enough money and he purchased a motorcycle from Superbike. Later, he returned to get another as his was stolen. Words were exchanged. Then when he returned to Superbike, he murdered the four people. The reason was given by his mother during an interview. They disrespected and embarrassed him. For that, he killed Scott Ponder, age 30, Brian Lucas, age 29, Chris Sherbet, age 26, and Beverly Guy, age 52, also Scott Ponder's mother. After the murders, Kolop then transferred to the University of South Carolina Upstate. He continued to advance professionally. He earned his pilot's license, then a real estate license in 2006, and then graduated in 2008 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration and Marketing. He continued his life, and on paper he looked good. Makes you wonder about the people in your own life who entered in as an adult. He changed real estate agencies, then purchased a house and a 95-acre plot of land, and then spent nearly $80,000 to fence in the property. He clearly had plans. With the property fenced in, a shipping container on the property, he began purchasing products on Amazon, then reviewing them. After the reviews, days turned into weeks and months, but his next two victims would come to him. A married couple was reported missing in mid-December 2015. Soon after, each had been released from jail. They needed a helping hand, and he prayed on them. They went to his property to do some manual work, clearing and cleaning. The Amazon review killer became just that, as he murdered Johnny Joe Coxey. He was 29. Kolop then turned his attention to the 25-year-old Megan. Unfortunately, it was according to the Spartanburg County Coroner, she's estimated to have died a week later than Johnny. Their bodies were not found until after he murdered once more and chained up another. Johnny and Megan were identified by their extensive tattoos. Todd turned his attention to a new couple, Caleb Brown and Charlie Carver. Kolop knew Caleb because she cleaned houses and cleared properties for Kolop before he offered them for rent. A six-time murderer had the confidence. He lured them onto the property in a similar way he did Johnny and Megan, in a way Kayla knew because she helped him before. They went to an area of the property they would work on, and Caleb went back into a building on the property and emerged with a gun. Like last time, he shot and killed the man, this time Charlie, age 32. Then he turned his attention to Kayla. She stayed alive by bending to Culp's will as he began assaulting her like he did that 14-year-old when he was just a boy in Tempe, perhaps reliving the experience on a grander scale. Charlie and Kayla had friends looking for them. Kayla had a dog she treated as her kid, and it was left in the apartment for days without food and water, a clear sign she was missing. They contacted police on September 5th, five days after her last communication, a text message. The police began their investigation and a warrant was issued for the location and data of Kayla and Charlie's phones. It takes time for the provider to process, and they did. A month later, though, strange postings appeared on Charlie's Facebook page. They included messages indicating that he and Kayla were married and were fine. Their families believed the postings were fake, because they came after weeks of silence. The warrant yielded results, and the phone's last ping was on Colop's property in Woodruff. On November 3rd, police issued two warrants, one at his primary residence and one at his property. Based on the fact that you were the last person to see them, and there's some other information that the investigators, and like I said, me and him were just brought into this. Yes, um, to, as a matter of fact, I was just brought into it last night. Okay. Okay. Um, 
but um, based on some information that, that Anderson Police Department received, they had contacted us for an assisting an agency report. Okay? Mm -hmm. And through that, as a standard practice, um, we follow the lines, yes, like she explained. Okay. And they did the search warrants, okay, with okay. the cell phones and everything. Okay. Um, and based on information, and that's what I was just talking to, is my supervisor. Um, based on the information um, that we received um, and that he's received, um, we have a search warrant, okay, okay, for your residence and your car. Okay. Okay. We are mainly looking for your cell phone. Okay. Okay. Well, what I need, I need to go in with, we, we, I, me, <coughs> at least one other, me or, and at least him need to go in with you. Yes. Pull that one first. All right, let them get ready. Come on, guys. It's jammed in here. Give me that crowbar back. Where's that? Get that big crowbar in here. I need that crowbar. Oh, John. Put it down here. Yeah, behind the thing. Watch out. Y'all move. I got it, watch out. Hey, Joey. Joey. Sheriff's Office. What? Back up there, buddy. Are you okay? Grab what? Go. Do you have any weapons? Coming through, okay? What's your name? What's your name, man? Lauren. Lauren. Okay. All right. Just a girl. Just a girl. Just a girl. How are you, honey? This we're is bolt this, cutters. This is our best. He's a paramedic. Oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna get you out of there. Okay. Just hang loose for me. Anybody got? A, I need a handcuff key. Handcuff key. I don't. I have got it right here. Hold up. Y'all slide back. Hold on. He's, He's got, got a go light. We got to get pictures. pictures. Randy, let, okay. let me see your light, Randy. You can you can put your hands down. So we You're okay. We're here. Okay. Yes, sir. Y'all sit back. Light on or off. You fine. We'll get the rest of it here. Let's get her out of here. Okay. We're getting bolt cutters, honey. Don't, don't. Right. You got pictures of the cuffs? No, hold on. Bolt cutters. Is both feet? Just one. Let it's, me see. It's attached to a attached? chain from okay. the wall, okay. and my neck's attached to the wall up here. Okay. All right. All right, we're going to get you out soon, okay? You got a handcuff, kid. I got another one. Come on, come on. I got another one. I'm going to get my car. No Bolt cutter. No just hit, hit the chain right there. Loose. Yeah. Just no, just right there at her hand, Brandon. We'll we'll get it off. We'll get it off here. Cut it right here. Do you know where your buddy is? Charlie. Yes. He shot him. He shot him. He shot Who him? did? Who? Todd Colehep shot Charlie Carver three times in the chest, wrapped him in a blue tarp, put him in the bucket of the tractor, locked me down here, and I never seen him again. Okay. He says he's dead and buried. He says there's several bodies dead and buried out here, and he okay. says that the dogs will be ruined if they go looking because there's red pepper. We're going to step you out, sweet dog, because there's what? Red pepper. Okay. Okay. Tell the dog people that. No, Cole pleaded guilty. On May 26, 2017, his guilt earned him seven counts of murder two counts of kidnapping, and one count of criminal sexual assault, and was sentenced to seven consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole in a plea bargain that spared him from the death penalty. He listened to his charges and acknowledged them. He understood he was going back to his second home, prison. By the time Todd was 29, he had spent half of his life behind bars, then almost 17 years as a free man literally killing to get back to prison. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below.